Good afternoon and welcome to the Humidor Report. Justin here. It is a new year and that means it is time for a new top 25 from Cigar Aficionado. Uh, we did this last year and in fact even in my previous years of doing the Humidor Report on Facebook for the R Lake Charles store, I always try to shine a little light on this top 25 when it comes out. Now one thing I'm going to say about top 25s and I say 25s plural because now there's scores of them. Uh, when people are talking about the cigar of the year, the top 25, for I think something like 12 to 15 years now, it has been Cigar Aficionado. Now there are a lot of other magazines and blogs and websites that are all releasing their own as well. But for the sake of brevity, some simplicity, and not running myself crazy or absolutely boring you all to tears, we are focusing on the Cigar Aficionado's top 25. I'll reference another one, but that's what we're going to look at today. Uh, now, of the top 25, they've been rolling it out bit by bit throughout the week. Uh, they just dropped 11 through 25 today. So that today being Friday, so we do record this in advance. So no big spoilers or anything, I don't think. Uh, but today we saw the full lineup. Uh, and we're going to actually work kind of from 25 back towards one of the blends that made the top 25 that we have in stock. I will say that most of these are not the size specifically that made it on the, the charts, but I'm gonna tell you what size we do have here on the table and tell you what the actual size that won or that made the top 25, what those sizes actually are. And we're gonna start over here to my left with the Alec and Bradley Kintsugi. Now we just brought Alec Bradley in this past year. Uh, it's not a, not a line that we've carried from from when we opened. I believe we picked it up probably about April-ish or so of 2021. And the Kintsugi that we have over here on the table, it is a Robusto, but the size that actually got, and it was number 25, just making the list, uh, was actually a Corona Gorda. So an inch longer, so you're looking at a six inch by something I want to say like a 46 to 48 ring gauge. So a little skinnier than the Robusto, but an inch longer. Uh, but same blend, uh, we do carry the Robusto and the Toro in the Kintsugi is what we normally have on the shelves over here. Now next to it, uh, being that we don't have some, we're going to go to number 17 on this year's list, My Father the Judge. And that is the correct size. That is the Grand Robusto that we had there. It's a 5 by 60 So it's a real chunky Robusto or a really short Gordo, however which way you would like to look at it. But it is a 5 inch by 60 ring gauge. Just brought this in on the last order. Not a size we have been carrying. Just picked it up and glad we did because it got number 17 for the year. Now next to it, we've got number 14 for this year, which might look familiar, certainly talking about the Cigar Aficionado Top 25. That is the Aging Room Quattro. Now the one that we have on the, the table is the Maestro. The Maestro actually was the Cigar of the Year for 2019. Well, that blend is back on the list this year, but in its Churchill size. They call that one the Concerto is the name of that one. So Churchill, your 7 inch by 46, 48, something that neck of the woods. So a little longer, a little skinnier than that one there, but same blend that made Cigar of the Year now two years ago, back on the top 25 coming in at number 14 with a Churchill version of the one you see here on the table. Now next to it, the box that really just kind of wants to lay flat and look like it's trying to take a nap on us, that's going to be number nine. That is the Rocky Patel Grand Reserve Robusto. Now Grand Reserve has been on the market for a few years now, but it was for international distribution only. U.S. distribution just began this year. So good to see something on the list that is say a newer, a new blend at least, at least newer to the American market, is that Grand Robusto. It's kind of medium bodied. I do believe it's all Honduran. Uh, but that one is coming in on the list there at number nine. The Robusto is what actually made the list. We've got the six by 60. And in fact, I've only got a few of those left. So hopefully we'll be seeing some more of those in here pretty soon. Now, next to it, we're moving into number seven. This is the Milanio Maduro by Oliva, the Siri V. Milanio Maduro version, the Churchill 
is actually the one that made the list. Uh, we've got the Torpedo and the Robusto are normally the ones that we carry in the Maduro. But this is what's going to bring me to talking about another top 25 list. Because I started getting phone calls a week or so ago, uh, Cigar of the Year, Cigar of the Year, Cigar of the Year. And I'm like, well, Cigar Aficionado hasn't announced that yet. They're like, no, I saw it online, I saw it online. And they did, but it wasn't Cigar Aficionado. Uh, I believe that was, I want to say, Cigar Journal. I think is the one that named this size, the Torpedo actually, as their Cigar of the Year. So that's some real good love for Oliva Melanio Maduros this year, making it number one on one list and making it nicely in the top 10 on Cigar Aficionado's list as well. So next to it, number five was the Casa Cuba Doble Cuatro. Double Quattro is kind of an odd size. It's it's a four and a half by I think it's a 52. So it's a half inch shorter than a Robusto, but two ring gauges larger than a Robusto. So it's kind of an unusual size. Uh, the one we have here is the Double Cinco, which is the true Robusto, five by 50. Uh, so the one that actually made the list this year in that Double Quattro, uh, a little shorter, a little fatter than the guy that you see here, but again, same blend. Moving on down the line, we're getting into the last two. And when I say the last two, I do mean number two right here with the Monte Cristo 1935 Anniversary Nicaragua Series. I believe is technically the full correct name of it. This is new this year. Uh, this actually has been a pretty popular one. It's sold well over here. Definitely fuller bodied Monte Cristo. We're not talking your old yellers or even your Monte Whites at this point. You know, this is a fuller, fuller bodied Nicaraguan blend uh, that was released earlier this year. Again, I believe this is also done by AJ Fernandez who does the Monte Cristo Nic Nicaragua series as well. That one, that is the correct size. That is the number two. Is the torpedo on that one. That is the match for what was on the list this year. Uh, we carry a Toro and we carry that number two as well. So that's our number two. But the cigar of the year this year, it is nothing new by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, this blend was launched in 1994 and really was the beginning of all things great for Padron. Prior to 1994, about all Padron really had on the market was their Thousand Series, which is the little pale brown banded, you know, what we call their, I guess their core line is what you would call that as well. But when the 1964 Series came out, it was huge. And by huge, I remember even a time in the late 90s, early 2000s, when Cigar Aficionado's website has their counterfeit gallery that shows you what all the Cuban bands look like so you can help avoid fakes. Well, at that time, there were only two non-Cuban cigars that were also on the counterfeit gallery. Fuente Fuente Opus X and the Padron 1964 series. In fact, I remember a time before there were serial numbers on the bands. Now, for that line and for the 1926 series, each band has a secondary band that peeks out from under the primary band that actually has a serial number on it. There was that much counterfeiting of those going on. So when I say it was a big deal, man, was it a big deal. And it paved the path for the 1926 and Little Hammers and all of the other cigars that even if you can see on the lid of that box, how many 90 plus ratings this cigar has gotten and that's not just that blend that's how many 90 plus ratings that size of that blend has gotten so when people say who's the best manufacturer in the industry taste may be subjective but numbers like that don't lie and there is a reason that Padron is what Padron is they don't have sales reps they don't need them because they're Padron. And a big congratulations to them this year for getting Cigar of the Year. We do have the 1964 Exclusivo. We also carry the Imperialis. We carry the number four. We carry the Tube Sobrano and the Tube Presidente. That is our normal lineup of the 1964s. The one that actually got number one this year is the Torpedo. Similar size and shape to what you see here in the Monte Cristo, but it's going to be in that Padron 1964 line. Now for the ones that we have here that we don't have the actual sizes, we're certainly gonna work on it. Once this list comes out, all the items on it become pretty high demand items. Uh, so availability might be tough to get some of these actual sizes. But everything that we have on the table here is the exact blend as whatever did make the list. So if you're curious to what that cigar tastes like, even if it's not the specific size, we got usually 
plenty of options, at least a couple of options in each of these blends for you to come in and check it out. Another note about the top 25, obviously we will not have all 25. Three of them were Cuban, so those three are immediately off the list. There was a party of Siri D, a Cohiba Celio of some persuasion, and a Ramon Alones. Uh, another one that's on the list that we will not see here is the Fuente uh, Rare Pink. Uh, huge deal this year. Everyone's made a lot of noise about it, but it is available only to select retailers. And when I say select, I do mean very, very, very few of them. Uh, but other than that, we're going to look at everything else that's on, that's on the list, see if we can get some more of that stuff in here, see if we can get the other sizes of these in here. But for now, that's giving you a look at our what we currently have of this year's Cigar Aficionado Top 25. Uh, so tune in next week. We've actually gotten some new product in that I was planning to feature this week, but seemed we probably better go ahead and get this out of the way. Uh, so we'll be back next week with some actual new product to us uh, and hopefully some, some new product all in all if some of the things that I'm hoping show up, show up. So do stay tuned. Make sure you're here every Wednesday at 3 p.m. for the next ish edition of the Humidor Report. And that's going to wrap us up for this week. Until next time, I'm Justin, and we'll see you at the club.